This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Have you ever felt that you weren't secure on the internet? Has your ISP ever sent you an email detailing your browsing history? Ever see an online video say unavailable in your country? Well, my friend, consider yourself lucky because, my friend, you need a VPN. And I just so happen to be able to help, friend. Introducing Surfshark VPN, by far the most secure and easy to use VPN service provider out there. They do it all. They mask your IP address, uh, connect to servers from different countries, automatically block over a million malicious websites online, kind of like an antivirus, encrypt your data no matter what network you're on. Oh, and they have this unique no logs policy, meaning it is nearly impossible for anybody to see your browsing history. So you can browse, with privacy. If you've been considering getting a VPN or changing from your current one even a little bit, I highly, highly recommend Surfshark VPN. They offer unlimited downloads, you heard me, unlimited downloads across all of your devices, no matter what platform they are, from a console to your computer to your phone. And if you use the code MNB when checking out, you, my friend, can get yourself 83% off and three months free. There it is. You see it on the screen. I'm not joking. Get yourself 83% off and three months free by using the code MNB when you check out, my friends. And now, on to the video. If you've been watching for very long on the channel, you'll know that so far I've pretty much capitalized on theory videos about The Legend of Zelda, which is just what I'm most passionate about. And for those of you who have been paying very close attention, I've expressed my desire and willingness to annex more than just Zelda slash theory content into the channel. However, that does not mean that I have mastered theory videos, which was evidenced to me pretty clearly in my last Zelda one. For those of you who watched it, you probably already know what I'm talking about. Impa's bracelet. For those of you who haven't seen it, I recommend watching it now actually, since this video is kind of going to be a part 2 or part 1.5, as I'm going to expound on what was clearly rather confusing in it, but I won't be re-covering what's already been discussed in that video. It's about Skyward Sword's timeline manipulation and is pretty interesting in my opinion. The link to it will be on the screen and in the description below, so please feel free to pause this video right now if you haven't seen it and check it out and then return right here, of course. Now then, back to this video. It was made clear to me almost instantly when I read the comments after going live with that theory that people were not exactly on the same page as I was when I was scripting the video, to put it shortly. And it's 100% my fault. I believe I have analyzed the problem and have come to the conclusion that it happened as a result of my inexperience, since I'm still relatively new to this platform. What I'd like to do in this video is explain what happened for those interested in what happened and add on to the aforementioned theory with some more pieces of evidence that will hopefully help those previously confused to at least understand where I'm coming from. And yes, I fully understand that this does have a slight chance of confusing people more, so uh, fasten your timeline theory seatbelts, guys. Oh, and one last thing. I decided to do this video because, ultimately, I care about my viewers and I care about my content. I always get people who don't agree or who don't get it necessarily, but this video's comments went a little too far in my opinion. Opinion. And it really bothers me that I failed to deliver a script worthy of my own standard, and for that, I'd like to apologize to you. Okay, let's get into the content. First, I'll quickly summarize what happened that led to all the confusion in the last video in my opinion. I believe the part about the bracelet was taken wrongly because I assumed everyone had the same understanding that I did of Skyward Sword's past. You see, I happen to believe pretty strongly that Skyward Sword's past did not happen yet at the beginning of the game and just assumed everyone else thought that too. They clearly did not. And I know my belief sounds confusing, but let me expound on that now, which is what I did not do in the last video. From from what I've seen, people's main reasons for believing the past has already happened are 1. Impa's bracelet, and 2. The fact that if you notice, you can actually see Zelda in her crystallized form if you peek behind the doors located behind Impa in the present time, implying quite clearly that at least some of the events in the past have already taken place. However, there are two main reasons why I disagree, or at least believe there are too many discrepancies for it to be explained away so cleanly as a linear timeline. In the first 
first place, and most obviously, Demise himself was defeated in the past, right? You know, the events that take place at the end of the game? After which he was sealed away in the Master Sword, which was then placed in a pedestal in the sealed temple that we are able to see once we return to the present after these events. This already makes zero sense, and here's why. The pedestal that Link thrusts the Master Sword into in the past is not present in the present timeline until the end of the game. If the events of the past had truly happened, as some people believe due to seeing Impa's bracelet and Zelda's crystallization at the beginning of the game, then we should be able to see at least the pedestal that the Master Sword has supposedly already been placed in. But it's the opposite. The pedestal is nowhere to be found, much less the Master's Sword, which we know Link places right here in the past. In fact, if the Master Sword has already been placed in the mysteriously disappearing pedestal in the past, why then is the pre-Master Sword Goddess Sword here on Link's back in the present? You could say this is because, similarly to the Impa bracelet, somehow it is the Goddess Sword's fate to live this cycle, but I'm sorry, that just doesn't add up. How and why would the Master Sword leave its pedestal after being placed there in the past, travel back upwards to Skyloft, enter that pedestal, downgrade back to the Goddess Sword, and then transport itself back down to the Sealed Temple in that pedestal and upgrade back to the Master Sword all in time for Link and Co. to enter the present timeline again after the events of the end of the game? <sighs> if that sounded confusing, guys, it's because that is literally what it sounds like to believe that the events of the past already happened at least in their entirety. Clearly, not all of them did, but I'm not done yet. Point number two, which some people did bring up in the comments of the previous video, is the Tree of Life fruit. At a certain point in the game, Link travels to the Laneru Gorge and meets the Thunder Dragon, who is in dire need of some life tree fruit. The seed for such a tree that would produce such a fruit has been planted nearby, but it isn't growing in the gorge. So Link takes the seed to the sealed temple and, get this, goes to the past to plant it in the temple. Of course, it's fully grown by the time he reaches the present. You can probably see where I'm going with this. The tree is not present in the sealed temple before this point in the present timeline. It's clear to me that the events of the past have not happened yet. Again, at least not in their entirety, and this is what I mistakenly assumed everyone understood when I scripted the previous video. There are some people in the comments who said that there's some sort of explanation that entails the flow of time happening differently depending on who you are and what your destiny destiny is, for instance, Impa's bracelet. This explanation implies that Zelda already had her past happen, which is why you can see the bracelet and Zelda's crystalline form at the beginning of the game, but this explanation literally breaks itself up. Because is it not Link's destiny to go back in time as well? Is it not his destiny to plant the life tree or to place the Master Sword in the pedestal that isn't even there? By that exact train of logic, all of the things that Link is destined to do should already be visible, but yet we have a pedestal that doesn't appear in the present or in the past until Link defeats Demise in the past, a sword that goes from Master Sword form to Goddess Sword form back to Master Sword form, and from this pedestal in the past to this pedestal, and then back to this pedestal in the present just in time for the heroes to exit the gate of time, and a life tree that isn't present in the present until Link plants it in the past. If you are trying to imply that Impa's bracelet is already on Impa's arm because it was Zelda's destiny to give it to her in the past, then you cannot explain the pedestal, you cannot explain the Master Sword, you cannot explain the existence of Demise, and you cannot explain the life tree. Either the past happened, or it didn't. And when you have discrepancies, the only way to explain them is with either multiple realities, or split timelines, or both. And that brings me back to the bracelet. The reason why I used it to disprove a linear timeline when it seemingly implies a linear timeline is because of everything I just said in this video. I hope this helped clear up some confusions you may have had after watching the first theory. And if so, once again, I'm sorry that I didn't include it the first time. If not, once again, I'm also sorry about that. Timelines are notoriously confusing to talk about, so this all is perfectly understandable from certain points of view. Either way though, thank you so much for watching. If you still have some questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I might be able to answer some of them. Similarly, if you have a request for anything you'd like me to cover in The Legend of Zelda, leave that in the comments as well. Please consider giving this video a like so it gets spread around, especially to those who are confused about Zelda's timelines, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more theories and Nintendo content to come. As always, huge thanks to my amazing bandit crew who make my day every single 
day. If you're interested in joining the ranks of my elite and consequently helping me put food on my table, please feel free to press that join button below any video or follow the links in the description below to my Patreon or merch pages. Oh, I almost forgot, some of you deciphered ending 8 of my Create Your Own Nintendo Direct. Bravo to you. I am a man of my words, so it's time for your announcements. That took a lot of work and I'm proud of you guys. For those of you who may be confused by what I'm talking about, just check out the Create Your Own Nintendo Direct I made. You'll see what I mean. That's all I've got for this one, guys. So as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Masked Nintendo Bandit signing out. Peace!